So I'm joined in the studio by Mike Buchanan, leader of the Justice for Men and Boys and the Women Who Love Them party. You've been in the headlines really as an anti-feminist party. Yes. So what to you is a feminist? We use the categorization that was used by Christina Hoff Summers, and she distinguished between two types of feminists. So she, to this day, calls herself a feminist as an equity feminist. So if you like, um, a woman who believes in, or not, not, not necessarily a woman, but, but a person who believes in equality of opportunity and so on. But, but uh, um, by that definition, we're all feminists today, aren't we? I mean, I, I honestly don't know any, anybody who would deny women equality of opportunity. It's, it's kind of like, you know, that, that, that battle's been won. The, the other camp, though, she, uh, she, she called gender feminists. But in, in the UK, we would more normally call them radical feminists. And these are people, usually but not always women, who believe in special advantaging of, of women. So they're behind things like um, at, at, at Brunel University today, female postgraduate engineering students um, receive a grant of almost £23,000 purely on the grounds of gender. And to, to our minds, anybody who would support such a thing is, is a radical feminist. But uh, radical feminism has been the gender ideology of the establishment for more than 30 years in the UK. It, it, drives, it just drives everything. And um, in, our, it, in our manifesto, we have 20 areas where the human rights of men and boys are assaulted by the state's actions and inactions. And there are virtually none of those areas in which, um, in which radical feminism hasn't made life worse for, for men and boys. That's really interesting because in all the media that you see about you, it tends to seem that you believe all feminists are evil and should be hated. So, I mean, I myself call myself a feminist sure. and I believe in the equality of men and women. Yeah. Does that make you think any less of me? No, no, of course not. Because, I mean, it sounds like you're, you're, you're an equity feminist and we have no problem whatsoever with equity feminists. Um, other than, I guess, they provide cover for radical feminists. So it's, if you believe just in women, you know, in equality of opportunity, as I do, and 99% of people, I guess, today would. It, it is a meaningless term, feminist, in that sense, because you know all the battles that that feminists used to used to fight for um, have been won. I mean, I, I, I'm not, I mean, for five years now, I've been asking feminists to tell me one area where the state disadvantages women or girls, and in fact, they they, they normally go a very strange colour when I, when I do that because they can't think of one. So they have this narrative that women are oppressed, um, but it's perfectly well understood why why women are a minority in Parliament and in, let's say, major corporate boardrooms. And the prime reason for that was, was outlined by a world-renowned sociologist, Dr. Catherine Hakim, in 2000. And her, her, her research basically found that four in seven British men are work-centred and only one in seven British women. And, and it, it, it was something that echoed, I mean, I, I spent 30 years in the business sector and, and it, it just confirmed what I had, had seen across those 30 years. But don't you think that's a particularly damaging way to look at the world in which we live? Women make up more than 50% of the population and by having views that see men as more likely to go into work and more likely to be successful, that we're limiting half or more than half of the population. No, we, we aren't limiting anybody. The, the the first time I voted in a general election was in 1979, which was the first of three elections won by Margaret Thatcher. Now, that was 36 years ago. The idea that women are limited by anything other than, than what's in their heads is, is just, just ridiculous. Well, many would argue that Thatcher was actually a particularly masculine leader and she had to play a different type of game. Even though she was a woman, it was almost irrelevant because she was such a macho leader living in such a macho world. Well, no, Wouldn't she, your she, party she, she, just she, continue she, to exacerbate she, that issue? No, she, she was competing with men on a level playing field and that's what made her extraordinary. She was one in a billion, you know, in being prepared to do that. So the, 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 the sort of women who, who, who are being appointed through all women shortlists they're basically saying that they can't compete with men. And, um, yeah. But, but, I don't no, but, but, really but, but, think that's but, true. No, no, but, I think but, a lot but, of women are actually put in those positions because of the world in which we live, because of the patriarchal society in which we live, which people like you think is okay. Absolute nonsense. I mean, the patriarchy uh, theory, the, the feminist version of the patriarchy theory is one of the most bad insane things that that's ever entered human being a human being's head so you don't believe the patriarchy exists so the gender no, no, pay no. gap isn't an example of the patriarchy well, the gender pay gap, or the, that 25 percent of chief executives and senior officials in the uk are women okay 75 percent are all men the gender pay gap between 20 and 30 um is in women's favor 
women women on average earn slight uh, earn slightly more o- over that period and it's only really in the, in the in the 40s that that, that that it appears and that's mainly because women um at, at that age are not focusing on their careers they're working part time so it's, it's, it's a myth so you're in denial that the pay gap exists no i'm not in denial it, it just doesn't exist I mean, you know, or, or the, sorry, the, the, the gap exists, but the explanation for it is not what women say. And I think about 25 years ago, a guy called uh, Warren Farrell in the States wrote a book, um, why, um, why, why Men Earn More. And, and, and it's, it's, it's just so well understood why, or, you know, why, why men earn more. Why? Uh, because they go into, into higher paying professions. Is that right? Is that right? Yeah, that their, their path in life is to put them into jobs that pay more. Well, they 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 choose to do what's required to get into higher paid work. And women than, don't. Uh, in in general, women don't. So I want to come back now to student life. This is okay. a student radio. Yep. Our audiences are students. Something that's happening here is the University Feminist Society are running a campaign on getting more men into feminism. <laughs> I wondered what your view is on this and men who self-identify as feminists. I think they're traitors to their own class. Um, I, um, I did a blog post a couple of days ago. Um, I, look, I, I think I googled Nottingham University and feminism, and, and I came up with with um, um, you, you have a women's society, I think, don't you? Um, we have but, a feminist society oh, and, a, okay. and a women's network. A women's network, sorry, yeah. Um, but in in 2013, um, someone took the, 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 there was a I think at the, the Freshers Fair. So I guess some of those people will still be still be here. One was me. Oh, okay. Um, I need feminism because. And it was just it was just toe curlingly embarrassing. Some of the stuff that's put down. I need feminism because I have to I have to go, go in a queue to go to the toilet, whereas men don't. I need feminism because boobs. Um, I need feminism because I shouldn't have to explain why I need feminism. It was utterly pathetic. I mean, I asked you to expand on that. In what way is that pathetic? I mean. What was meant there by, say, boobs, for example, is that women can be objectified purely based on their breasts. And feminism helps to protect women against the idea that all they are are their bodies. It doesn't, it doesn't protect anyone from anything. Fem, femini- the idea that feminism protects anything, uh, anyone from anything is just a fantasy. But you admitted yourself that you're a feminist and an equity feminist. No, no, feminist, no, an equity feminist. But, but, that's, but, but equity feminism, for, for, for my lifetime, and I'm 57, Equity feminism has been of not the slightest consequence. It has been absolutely of, of zero importance because the only form of feminism that has been influential uh, politically, economically, and in other ways has, has been radical feminism. Okay, so what do you then think of this, the, the male students who self-identify as feminists who would disagree with you fundamentally and see it feel so strongly that women are, are not supported in the society in which we live that they themselves want to take it on i think they don't understand feminism they, 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 uh, and by, by, perhaps by, uh, it's you that doesn't understand feminism. i think i understand it pretty well i've written three books about it um feminism uh, in 2015 is that what you understand or do you yes. understand feminism in in books of radical writers that were writing in different no, contexts? no 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 i'm talking about I, I go back to the point that the only form of feminism which is of the slightest damned consequence is radical feminism and that, mis- misogyny is actually a very rare phenomenon and, and misandry is a very common one I'm not sure how many of them would agree with you on that. Well, I, uh, I, I don't know either, but, but, but it'd be good to do a straw poll after well, this. Well, we to... have had some questions in from students, actually, okay. to you. So one from Sarah, who's a first-year economics student, asks, do you think a campaign filled with hatred of one group of society is a positive way to get into politics? We, we, we haven't any hatred towards women. Just in, radical in feminists. Radical feminists. We, 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 we hate, yes, so we're perfectly open about that. Okay, and we've got another question from Katie, who's a third-year business student. She's interested in what your party is going to do for students if you get into power. What are we going to do for students? Um, well, um, something that we won't do for students is what's happening at Brunel University, which is to pay, um, which, um, which, which is to give twenty-three thousand pounds to people of just of just the one gender. Um, I mean, we, you know, other than other than that, I mean, we, 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 you know, we really don't have much to say about about uh, about students. So something like sixty percent of university students today are women. It was about it, the the ratio was the opposite when I was a student about uh, thirty six years ago. You know, in, in education more widely, we're we're, uh, we're calling for um, single sex schools, and in the case of boys, with with all male teach, teaching staff. Uh, to be options for, 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 for communities that want them.
Okay, I think we'll leave it there. Thank you for joining us today, Thank Mike. Thank you, Emma. It's been a pleasure. We've had loads of responses, particularly from men, actually, which is really interesting, particularly mm. concerned about how Mike Buchanan, the leader of this party, said that they were traitors really to their own kind for being a feminist. We've had a text in from Sam that says, I'm a man, I'm a feminist, that doesn't make me a traitor. If anything, that makes me someone in favour of equality in areas such as the pay gap, which definitely exists. We've had another one in from Stephen which says, as a man, the only problem I face due to my gender are because of the expectations promoted by the patriarchy. If anyone wants men to be liberated from this, they should support feminism. So I think this is quite an interesting idea and I wondered what you round the table thought about Mike's views and particularly on his view of men being feminists as well how did you feel about that i think in general like i think men should be feminists if men are in in favor of equality of the sexes they should be feminists it doesn't mean that they're a traitor to their own kind it just means that they want to live in a in my opinion they want to live in a right just and equal world and to say that they're a traitor for believing this i think is absolutely appalling yeah no i i mean i would class myself as what did he call it the the feminine e fem what was it an equity feminist equity feminist i'll class myself as an equity feminist um but like what he came out with some of that i mean you know you you basically put to him emma um well here's the the gender gap in employment 25 percent of women are employed in top jobs yes 75 percent or something like that chief executives and how he kind of didn't see that as (laughs) as clearly a gender gap i'd I'd never understand really and also when he said that men when men were making sure that they got themselves into high paid jobs (laughs) and that women weren't doing this and that we're not interested in getting into these high powered jobs that was absolutely like what an appalling statement if to that make. were the case then women wouldn't even go to university we'd be content sitting at home going oh i can't wait to get married and have children and it's ridiculous like isn't it like i think i don't quote me on it but more students at the moment are female than male and this yeah. does this does not show females who aren't interested in getting good jobs and who aren't interested in careers this actually shows women who are progressing and we really are interested in in our education and in our careers Going back to the male feminist point, I think it does actually, it will make a difference for men as well if if feminism is more widely accepted. I mean, feminism means equality of the sexes and that means that in things like uh, child, uh, what's the word, Um, having custody of the child after a divorce, it means that men will have equal rights with women, whereas at the moment women have the upper hand. And I think that that is often overlooked in debates about feminism, that people will benefit regardless of gender. Yeah, I mean, that is an interesting thing. And I think some of the things in this manifesto do make sense. There are areas where men are disadvantaged compared to women, and gender is clearly a really important issue in modern society. Chris messaging about this in regards to the grants he was talking about at universities, which is also obviously really important to us. So he said, does he not understand that grants like this are and the Marie Curie grant, for example, exist to encourage women into increasing increasingly gender divided disciplines like engineering for example do you think that's a positive way are you in favor of this sort of positive discrimination in that respect or do you think perhaps mike has a point there i think there is a point with positive discrimination like 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 you said like it's about gender equality feminism and if you are obviously there is a problem with the things like the sciences which there are left women in but i think there's a there's a different way to get women involved rather than throwing money at them i think you need to engage them more at school sort of and you need to tackle what the stereotypes of girls being good at english and boys being good at maths you need to tackle that but i don't think positive discrimination and throwing money at you if you do a phd in engineering and you're a girl i really don't think that's the way forward I don't think any sort of discrimination is a positive discrimination because you're still negatively affecting somebody. And yeah, I think you're right, Meg. They do need to be targeted at schools where it should stop being stigmatised for girls to enjoy maths and science. And it should stop being stigmatised for boys to enjoy things like food technology, for example, or English or any of those other girly subjects uh, I just want to go back to, to one point from earlier um, the fact that he basically claimed that, that there isn't really misogyny anymore which I think is is like just one of the most <laughs> stupid things I've ever heard I mean you know as a male at university I can honestly say that misogyny still very much exists and the fact of the matter is with these attitudes of oh there there isn't really discrimination against women anymore Uh, you know everyone is feminist everyone is class of feminist because everyone believes in women's rights well 
clearly not. You know, there, there, there is still so much that is wrong with, with the. You know, we talk so much on your end about the lag culture and and misogyny at, at, at younger ages, and for for someone to to come out and say, well, well, that issue is dealt with now. Let's put it behind us. Let's not keep, you know, um, bringing this up. That's just sweeping it under the carpet, and it's it's so wrong and very dangerous as well. What also really worried me about that is coupling it with that. What he said about instigating all boys schools with all male teachers like that if we still live in a society of misogyny how is that going to help at all if you just keep all boys together yeah there's some really interesting points i just wanted to probably as a final point to look at the way he's conducting this campaign it's very much an anti-feminist campaign i just wondered what your views are looking ahead to the general election with all the parties coming out with their with their campaigning tactics if you think this is a positive way of promoting politics in in modern day and what you think about his tactics in doing so well it's not is it i mean you know when they when the question was put to him um what what can he do for students he didn't say anything. He said, what we won't do for students is take away that money, which proves it's just a very negative uh, political um, way to, to, to go about things. I think he he almost sort of didn't do himself any favours by saying that everybody today is a feminist because if everybody today is a feminist and you are an anti-feminist party, you are basically making yourself completely unelectable. Nobody's going to vote for something that they, they completely disagree with.